All right, so in this video, we're gonna add some form validation to this. Basically, I wanted to make sure that if there is no quantity entered, then we get some sort of uh, error message, or at least for the time being, we just don't want it to go through and add a line like this. Now, to keep this clean, I'm gonna delete some of the stuff really quickly here. And also, for the sake of making this work, for future input boxes, I'm gonna add another box to this form. So I'll have something like a date. So this will be date entered and we'll add like date received. Let's go to our script editor as usual and open our HTML for our user form. And basically after this quantity received, I'm just gonna copy that whole input box and paste another one below. And this one will call date received. And this will be of type date. Now with this, this is text, this is date. Maybe we should change this to a number. So if I save this, go back and reload this thing, we should have now our date. So we wanna make sure that we actually get this date and put it in our results. So to make that happen, I'm gonna make sure that we grab that date and send it over. Now this is gonna come back as string, if I'm not mistaken, so we need to convert that to a date object. So I'm gonna send it as a last argument here. So that way it will take that date received, convert it to an actual JavaScript date, and we'll send it over to our backend side to get processed. Now we wanna make sure that we do accept this parameter, date received, on our backend side, which means we're gonna have to go to our function that adds a new row and add that as one of the parameters. So if I did all of this right, if I save this, go back and reload this. Let's try to add something to this. So I'm gonna do quantity four and some date, click add. So that's not good. All right, so since I don't wanna deal with this, I'm just gonna send this as text and let my spreadsheet convert it to date by itself and less headache for us. So we'll save it. Let's just go and reload this and see what happens. Okay, go back here, some quantity, some date. Fair enough, so that's now a date, good. So now I have a field, basically the whole idea here, I wanted to make sure there is more than just one box. So fair enough, now at this point, I want to add some validation. So I wanna make sure that there is something selected in both of these boxes. And maybe I also want to clear this date received, actually, let's do that too. So for now, I'll just do it the same way, but later we'll probably convert this to something nicer than this. So we'll just clear it the same way after it's submitted. So I'll go back here and reload this. We're good, so it does clear the field. All right, so now let's try to add some validation so that if there's nothing entered, if you click add, this doesn't happen. And I'll try to add something that will be simple. So let's just create a function Maybe I'll just call it validate, that's good enough. So a couple of things I want to do here. First, I want to just grab everything that needs to be validated. Let's make sure we have a wrapper around our form, which I think I already have, I have this div, and I'm just gonna give this some sort of ID. So I'm gonna use this ID to grab all the input boxes here that needs to be validated. 
So the ID is user form. So I'm going to take that, go back to my function, do document, and I'm going to use query selector all. And this should allow us to pass CSS to get all the elements we need. So I'm going to go ID user form. So in CSS, the ID goes with a pound key. And within that user form, I want all input boxes, just like this. So that should grab all of them. Now, if you wanted to also get, let's say, something else, maybe you have a text area or you have a select box that needs to be validated, you could also just do a comma and do all of the select boxes or if this was text area you can do text area so you can comma separate all of this for me all of the things that needs to be validated in this form are input elements so i have only this quantity received that's input i have this date that's also an input so those are the ones i need validated so that's what i'm going to pass in here so i'm going to save this in a variable So what I'm gonna do now, this is just gonna grab all the elements on a page that needs to be validated. So I'm gonna loop through all of those and check if all of them are valid. And we are gonna be using just plain HTML5 validation, which means all we have to do, if it's not already here, just go and type, see, for example, this input required. Apparently I already got that from copy pasting that, but if it wasn't here, you could just type required here and required. So if you don't have this, just simply required, that should make that field required. And then you can also do like minimum characters and this type of stuff if you wanted to. And we'll probably talk about that at some point. So now that I did make those required, I just have to make sure that all of these required fields are validated. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I need to loop through this fields to validate. And I want to go with array every method. So if you use array every method, you can just loop through everything in an array and check if everything passes a certain condition. Now, the only problem here is this is not an array. So if this was an array, we should be able to do this dot every and use a callback function here to just run through all of this in the list. But this is not an array, so there's no every method. This gives you a node list. Now what we need to do, I still want to use that every method. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use our array global here. And here it should have the method or what we call a prototype in here. And the prototype it should have is that every method that I was trying to apply to this field. And I should be able to do that by using call on this. And in this call, I'm gonna pass that node list and then give it the callback function. So this should allow me to use my array every method without actually having every method on a node list. So here we're gonna pass each element so basically what this line is going to do is gonna loop through every element that we search and find using this statement. And every time with each variation of that loop, it's gonna create this EL variable, which is gonna be one of the elements. So what we can do, we can simply just do that EL.validate. Actually, it's called check validity. And this basically is gonna run through one element and check if it's valid. So if they do pass, this gives us true. And what we need to do is simply just return this to this every method. And what's gonna happen if every single one of those elements gives us true, then we are fine. This whole thing is gonna give us true. Otherwise, if one of them fails, this whole thing is gonna be false. So I'm just gonna return this, which is basically gonna either give us true if everything is valid, or it's gonna give us false if it's not. Now we need to just run that validate function to make sure this validation happens. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to this after button clicked. So right now we just blindly grab all of this stuff and submit it to our spreadsheet, but we wanna make sure we check 
and do validation before we do that. So instead of just submitting that right away, I'm going to say if, and in this if statement, I'm going to use that function, that validate function. I'm gonna run that validate function in this if statement, and if all of them are valid, this is gonna give us true. So I'm gonna say if all of them are valid, then, we basically just gonna do this thing that we were doing. So I'm just gonna go here, close the curly bracket, and tab this in. So if everything is fine, we'll simply just run all of this code. Otherwise, I'm just gonna say handle this later. So let's go check what happens. So hopefully if this validation works, if it's all fine, we should be able to run and send the data. Otherwise, it should just not do anything. So right now, this is what I got. So if I click Add, so as you can see, nothing happens. Now I'm gonna go here and do something like four here and click Add. Again, nothing should happen because I'm validating date received as well. So now if I add a date and I click add, there we go, it adds the line. Now what I want to do next after this, maybe I want to do some sort of message here that you have to enter everything in the fields. And then also when it does go through, maybe we'll do a message like a line added or something like that, right? Now for this, I'm gonna try to use toasts and I didn't even know Bootstrap now has toasts so this will be the first time I'm using this. Hopefully I'll figure that out while I'm making the video. So in Bootstrap here under our components we have toasts which is basically this little message popping up. I'll just grab one of these, go back to my HTML and put this below this entire form. So I'll just create a div here just to keep this separated in some way. And go here and paste that code. All right, so in this, I don't want an image. I'm gonna get rid of that. This says bootstrap, which should be this text over here. So I'm just gonna say error. And then instead of this 11 minutes ago, I'll just replace that with something like notification. And right here, I'm gonna do some sort of message. I'm gonna give this thing some sort of ID. So by default, I believe this should be hidden. So if I go back and reload this, it shouldn't appear. Now, what we can do, we can make it appear by calling it, I think. So if we scroll down, seems like they're using jQuery. One of the things I guess I don't like about Bootstrap, but anyways, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna copy this and try to see what happens. I want this error message to show up when there is a problem with this validation. So this is this handle, this later situation. So I'm gonna go here and paste that. And the one I want to show, the element, is the one that I just named error notification. That's the ID. And because in jQuery it's using CSS selectors, we're gonna be doing pound that. Let's try this and see what happens. So I'm gonna save this, go back, and reload this. So if I click add, see it pops up too quick. So we need that to be slower, but it does pop up and we get the error message. Now it should not pop up if I, this should still pop up, but if I fill this up and click add, see it adds the line, now we don't get the error. So we just need to make sure that this takes longer. Let's go check their docs and see how we do that. There it is, data delay. Let's try that. So I'm gonna go back to this and add this data delay 
and it should be probably in milliseconds. So let's do like two seconds. Click add. Maybe we could do a little longer than that. So Okay, so that works actually pretty well. I'm going to do another one of these. Some commenting would be a good idea, but this will be success notification. So this one is not gonna be error, it's gonna be success and it will be the same notification. This will be the message. Now we need to make sure we now trigger this success notification ID. And we're gonna trigger that when our submission is successful. So that's where this happens. So I'll do it after we add all of this. So that's, I guess, after submit. So I'll just copy this and go after submit when we clear all the stuff. We'll also just say success notification. So let's go check what happens. So now if I go back and reload this form, if I click on this, it's gonna say this error message. And then if I do four and pick some date and click add, it says row added. Works just fine. So what I'm curious about, if I try to enter this, See, because I changed this to number, if I click add, that should still be invalid. So the only thing I think I'm just going to do is just push that down a little bit so it doesn't show up right below the button. So I guess that's margin top zero. Let's see what that means. So if I go to my notification and add a class to this and we'll do margin top 50 just to see what happens. That didn't do anything. Oh, it says where the size is one off. So it can go from zero to five. I guess five is a large margin. Okay, so I guess we'll just do this MT5. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that created a margin here. If you wanted less, I guess you can do four, three, or one of those. So now we should have some spacing on that. That looks pretty good. Last thing I'm gonna do here for our error notification, for this one, I'm just gonna do a little bit of background color. You know, you can use a hex color here. It's good enough. So that will be now our error notification and success one, we'll just leave it as is. That's fine. I guess the last thing I'm gonna do on this video, it's getting really long, but I'm also gonna change this title on top that says App Script Application, which is kind of annoying. And we should be able to do that by simply going back to our code and get to the part where we actually load our HTML. So we should be able to take this HTML output. This should have set title and we'll set the title to receive inventory or something. So let's go check what happens. So now it says receive inventory and maybe I'll add a heading here on top too, above this entire form. I'll use something like H3. Maybe that's too large. Maybe I should go for H4. Good enough. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.